please wait while we load your current simulated experience, Planet Earth. Hey guys, this is Jay with Faith Evolved, where I talk about all things spiritual, metaphysical, philosophical, and mental health. And today I'm going to be doing a video that I actually started off this whole channel with, a response video to a YouTuber named Thomas Westbrook, aka Holy Kool-Aid. And I'm excited right now, I can barely contain my excitement because I just watched one of his videos after probably three years <laughs> from when I first saw it, and I am blown away by the content of this video called What If God Wasn't Divine? That's right, this guy is an atheist, and this is probably one of the most mind-blowing videos that I've watched in a really long time. Just some of the concepts and theories he has in his video, and I just have to say something about it. Stay tuned. So like I said, this guy is an atheist, and usually when I watch videos from atheists, they're typically debunking theist arguments. They're typically, you know, and he does many times release videos like pointing out contradictions in the Bible or faulty arguments towards the existence of God, you know, and he even has a, uh, a video here, like I said, what if God wasn't divine, where he goes through all these different scenarios, all of which... He says, doesn't have to be God. Like, for example, he puts this quote here in his video, any sufficiently advanced extraterrestrial intelligence is indistinguishable from God. And that's Shermer's last law. But he goes into all these different scenarios of potential situations where maybe there was a much higher intelligence that created this universe or multiple universes. Like maybe we're, you know, basically our universe is one of many you know, petri dishes in a lab somewhere on a cosmic scale where these advanced beings are just tampering and trying to figure out, you know, ways to reverse entropy or something. Or, you know, we're in a simulation where, you know, maybe ourselves did it, you know, and we're trying to, like, find a last-ditch effort to prevent heat death of the universe. Like, all these different scenarios he comes up with. you got to watch the video. I want to post it in the, in the uh, description of this video. And it is, it's mind-blowing. Like, something I wouldn't expect to see from an atheist. Now, this is a response video to his video, but also to anybody else out there that wants to see another perspective on this topic. Because, yes, from the books that I've read, such as A Course of Miracles, or even more so the Arantia book, it does talk about there's many different levels of God. Like, the sevenfold God. Um... And there's different, there's different levels of reality. Like there's, um, for example, we live in a finite universe. And there's, and there's different levels of it where you have, uh, have um, God the Supreme, God the Ultimate, God the Absolute. And then you have, of course, existential I Am. There's like different levels of experiencing God. And I'm not here to tell them, or anybody for that matter, to believe in God or that my uh, explanation of all this stuff is going to be, you know... I don't know, more compelling or more convincing than his. His, you know, if I wasn't, you know, secure in my own faith and my own personal experience that I do believe in a God who does want to be intimately involved in our lives and does love us and does want to see us come out of this, this dark corner of the universe and grow and ascend back towards the source, you know, yeah, you know, I would probably be shaken to the core by watching this video. If I was a Christian like I was three, four years ago, I would have been shaken to the core. I'd be like, oh my God. What if, you know, what if God wasn't divine? <laughs> but the difference between me and Thomas Westbrook is I do believe that there is a purpose. Like, I don't understand the whole concept of, okay, it doesn't have to be a God. Okay, God is just a word symbol for what we don't understand of an intelligence that's far greater, far more competent, far more intelligent, you know, just in infinitely on a more cosmic scale smarter than we'll ever be as finite human beings. And just as you might say, Thomas, that it is arrogant of us to say, you know, that this God must be my God of my religion, it is equally as arrogant to say that there's no God or there's no supreme being, there's no source, you know? You know, for you to say that, you know, there could be a, potentially a creator you know, whether it's a god or an extraterrestrial or, you know, a, a celestial being that's just orders of magnitude smarter than us. You know, how do you know that they are not aware of our existence? You know, like, how do you know that they don't have a consciousness like we do? 
see, there's, there's two different philosophies. And even this is touched on in the Arantia book where some people say that God is not personal. And then some people say God must be personal. And there was like a whole debate in the Arantia book between actually Jesus and I forget who it was. I don't know, it was Rodan, one of those folks that he was talking to um, in uh, the Arantia book. I have to, I'll post the, the, uh, the actual name <laughs> um, down here. But, you know, there was the, the whole argument was going on whether, maybe actually it was one of the, one of the disciples actually. But the, the whole argument was, was God personal or God not personal? Personal meaning that you can have a personal relationship. Like, and I don't mean like the Christianese version. I mean, you could actually commune. You could actually have a conversation with this being called God. And if you are a creator, wouldn't you give the attributes you have to your creations? The ability to commune, converse? And as a former evangelical Christian myself, and as you may know, maybe you didn't have the experience that others did have. I mean, I have not personally had what the A Course of Miracles calls the holy instant. Or as, you know, Christians may call being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Or experience that moment of oneness with all creation. That, you know, sense of bliss when you're, you know, in the present moment. And the past and the future are gone. And you're, just, you're there and you feel that peace. That are, and you remember who you are from beyond, beyond the veil. Um, beyond the simulation. <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you're momentarily you know released from the body, like I never had that experience yet. I'm maybe you never had that experience, but other people have had that experience. So does that mean you know that they're making it up? We have no way of proving that. It's just like this argument where you know it's impossible for me to prove to anybody else that there's a God. Like even I sometimes have doubts about whether. And again, I use God as a word symbol for this. For whoever created me, you know, or whatever being or beings created me in my existence, in my universe. Like, there's no way I can prove that to you. Like, if you've never had steak before, like, I can't describe it enough for you to know what it tastes like. You have to taste it for yourself. You have to have that experience. So I do believe that there are some human beings in history, you know, like Jesus or Buddha and other enlightened beings that have had that experience. And they're trying to tell us, hey, this is what it is, you know, and we're evolving over time. You know, there was, you know evolution from when you know we were just you know single-celled organisms to when we evolved throughout time and then we had uh you know uh, you know different between you know when there was a single cell organism in in human beings today we've had multiple evolutions of different um species you know some people say we we, we evolved from apes and the ranch book says we evolved from lemur type beings um and i'm sure there's other you know intermediate as well species that we've evolved from to up to this point of being homo sapiens but we're evolving you know 2000 years ago that's what you had you had all these different religions you had yahweh you know the god of israel you know you had um jehovah you had um the most high all these different names that people had for god and it evolved from in the very beginning being, being a, basically a volcano god to a tribal god, to a national god, and now when Jesus came, he said, "No, God is the God of everybody. You know, God of the entire universe, the universe of universes, if you want to call that, you know, the multiverses. There is a source where all that came from, and it's an it's an intelligent being, and that being wants to know you. The being created you so that it wouldn't so it wouldn't have this sense of being alone, existentially, because the fact of love is you can't you can't have love to yourself." When you, when you enjoy something, when you find a new band or you, you find this, uh, you know, amazing steak, <laughs> like I talked about before, you want to share that with somebody else. If you enjoy something, your instinct is to share it with somebody else because you love it so much, you want somebody else to experience that. Well, I believe that's where this universe came from, that this existential being, this I am being, if you want to put a word symbol of God on it, needed to extend itself. And it's constantly expanding eternally infinitely and eternally and it, its purpose its entire purpose is to extend itself and in, if there is a god god would have to encompass everything everything that exists everything that has existed will exist you know exists now it had to have all existed within a source there's nothing outside of this source the source intelligence the source being whatever you want to call it 
So if there is a God, we're all a part of that God. We are all within, all encompassed within that God. It's just like a drop in the ocean. The ocean's in the drop and the drop is in the ocean. It's all part of it. Now, of course, for the experience of God to experience itself relating to another individual, it had to create the illusion of separation uh, or not separation, like being a, 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 you know cut off, but uh, the, the illusion of, you know, subconsciousness within it that can have its own existence, its own being, its individuality, a fractal of God, if you want to call it that, a fragment of God, as some spiritual books call it. So now to your point, Thomas, yes, maybe we cut ourselves off, you know, um, in our own mind, because again, mind, because really God is, a, it would be a consciousness, really ultimately it would be consciousness, the consciousness of the universe. And it would take a conscious mind to envision creating something, to envision a, a universe or universes, uh, multiverses, whatever you want to call it. It would take some kind of intelligence. That's what, that's what, you know, people are trying to say when they say God. They're trying to say there is this intelligence. You know, of course, there's different religions that say ours is exclusive. We have to believe our God is the only God there is. Like, I get that. And that's, that's because of evolution. That's because we're humans. We're finite beings. We don't totally get the whole universe. We try to ascribe things we don't understand to God when science does a lot of times debunk things like that. We're trying to understand. We don't fully get it. So, of course, we're going to ascribe, you know, a word symbol of God to something we don't understand. And as, as, as science progresses, it does debunk all that superstitious crap. But at the same time, it opens up all these different, you know, theories that you came up with in your video. All these different potential situations where we're in a simulation or, you know, there's time dilation and it, the universe is, you know, born and dies at a relative instant, which is, of course, a miracle says, <laughs> you know, and God is even not even aware of it because we're just, you know, if we're eternal beings, this instance of human history of millions of years is a flash in the pan. It, it, it's, it's already done. It's over. And this is another topic that's touched on in The Course in Miracles. Um, that this universe isn't real. This physical universe, this 3D realm that we're in is, is a dream. It's what the word is used in, in A Course in Miracles. If it was written today, I think a simulation would be the word it's used. But it was written in the 70s. So it calls it projection and stuff like that and perception. But this is, this is you know, this is a part of God. What, what it calls, what the, what the Course in Miracles calls a son of God. A child of God, where a, a fragment of God's consciousness is individuated and is able to experience itself and able to, and, and I, think, I think a part of the reason why is because of the fact that to be able to experience, and again, to your point in your video, we need to experience that contrast. We came from, we're coming from a, a planet which is, f you know, fraught with this terrible diseases and hatred and war and, and, and famine and poverty and, and, you know, really horrible things that happen to people like molestation and, 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 you know, rape and just murder and all these different things that happen to us, you know, on this planet. And it's part of the simulation to, you know, to show us this is what we, you know, first of all, what we don't want. And, and then eventually what we do want. Well, we don't want all these negative things and we only take what's of value What's of spiritual value? And again, another buzzword that atheists might cringe at, spirituality is not necessarily this, you know, idea of divinity per se. I mean, I think it is, but, you know, spirituality is really just this, uh, of the explanation, you know, it's like, it's like, a, it's like, you know, here's what we do know. Here's what we don't know. What we don't know is spirituality. It's the, it's the, it's the unknown. We're still trying to ascend in our knowledge and our understanding to figure out. It's everything that makes the universe work and everything about the universe we don't understand that we're all striving and evolving towards. So what's spirituality now will probably might shrink a little bit, you know, as what becomes natural part of our awareness, what becomes who we are, you know, what we understand as normal, just like, you know, if we were to take a, a, a you know, a cell phone and show it to, a, you know, a tribe somewhere, you know, in the jungle somewhere, I mean, they're probably going to think we're gods, <laughs> you know? So I get that concept. And I, and I get now that what science is, 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 you know, showing is natural and can be explained by the laws of the universe, like physics and, and first and second law of thermodynamics and all this stuff that we have in mathematics. Like at the same time, it shows how complex it is, you know? And I'm not here to try to spout these things off like, you know, fine-tune universe or, or um, 
what is it called? Uh, something in Plexity. It's another Christianese buzzword. Um, but I'm not trying to like throw these buzzwords and phrases at you, but just to get you to think that, you know, the more we understand about the universe, the less we actually realize we understand. And the more vast and more advanced, you know, some intelligent being must be to create this universe. And we even call things like DNA code. I mean, think about it. I mean, why would, why would we have laws of the universe? It's not, it's not just that we would have to have, you know, a, a, a god to create us or some higher being to create us. It's just that there, ha there also has to be a placeholder for that. There has to be laws of the universe for it, which to exist in. There has to be a consciousness for which to think of creating these laws of the universe, which then could place beings in it that can live, move, and have their being. So there's so many more levels to it. It's not just as simple as saying, oh, we evolved from nothing. Or there was this big bang. Whether that's all true or not, there still has to be a, 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 a structure, a framework for all that to exist within. And if, to begin with, I mean, you could have, you know, it's like saying here, here's Windows, 9, Windows 95. <laughs> I always use that example because that's that was when I first started getting into computers. But Windows 11, okay? Um, here's a, here's a, a CD or a thumb drive with Windows 11 on it. It's It was, you know... It's created. I created this, but you don't have a computer to run it on. The computer doesn't have a processor. It doesn't have RAM to, or a hard disk to store memory. It doesn't have electricity to, to, to power it. It doesn't have, you know, the ability to calculate because math doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have the ability to, to store data because electromagnetic ability doesn't exist. I mean, like, all these things have to exist. You know, irreducible complexity. That's what it was. You know, and I, and I know it's almost like an argument for that, but the point is all this stuff has to be there for it to work within. You know, it's not just like the bacteria that, you know, you can you can take away some parts and yeah, it wouldn't work. It's it's way deeper than that. So anyways, the point of all this is to say, you know, the only difference between me and you is I believe that there is a plan, a divine plan, if you want to call it that, for existence itself. It doesn't just exist for nothing. You, you have two options, either existence exist or it doesn't well your you, one option's gone you know <laughs> the, the, the option of non-existence can't ever exist because existence existed for at least one microsecond one nanosecond one picosecond okay it's it's here it's now there's no way out of it <laughs> so if it, if, it, if, if it exists at all it must have existed for eternity in the past and eternity in the future so if that's the case why couldn't it be an eternal being that is so far beyond what our finite, puny little brains can come up with. And all we can come up with is God, the God of the Bible, you know? Or that we can come up with as, if we're an atheist, well, maybe life was seeded here, you know, by aliens, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago. Or maybe there might be creators that's bigger than us, but not God. Nope, can't, can't, can't call it God. Nope, can't use that word symbol. It's too taboo. No. <laughs> we don't even know. We could all be wrong and there'd be some kind of reality beyond God, for all we know. <laughs> you know, that, that supersedes both of our silly little arguments that our puny little ant brain humans come up with. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thanks to God bless. Pun intended.